The coasts of the world have become major population centers, with millions of people choosing to live near the sea. 14 out of 17 top megacities, like Tokyo, Mumbai, Sao Paulo, New York, and Shanghai are all found on the coasts. As a result, our coasts are changing. Our planet's population continues to surge, especially in developing countries. By 2050, worldwide population is predicted to double. With sprawling suburbs comes increasing pressure on the coastal habitats, placing the marine ecosystem under enormous strain, leaving giant populations vulnerable to the effects of hazards like tsunamis and flooding. The wave crashed into the town, killing more than a thousand people. They knew the sea, lived by it, fished in it, but none could imagine what it could do to them. With forecasted climate change over the next 100 years, Coastal cities need to plan for their future now. Coastal ecosystems are the natural buffers to both the coastal population and its infrastructure. They protect us from the devastating impacts of marine-related hazards. They're also one of our most valuable resources driving economies by providing food, transport, and even leisure and tourism activities. Overexploiting coastal space and resources, coastal settlements are lowering their defence system against the impacts of ocean hazards. These include storm surges, tsunamis and extreme wind-forced waves. As well as these natural disasters, coastal infrastructure around the world is also facing more cumulative hazards like erosion, pollution and the rise in sea levels. Well, coastal erosion is happening worldwide because there isn't enough sediment on the beaches and partly because sea level rise actually promotes a retreat of the shoreline. Um, as to why sea levels are rising, well, that's, that, that in effect is the ocean volume is getting bigger, so the melting of land-based ice and actually the ocean as it warms expands. So those two processes together lead to a global rise in sea level. A rise in sea level would have um, quite a range of impacts on coastal cities. I think the most obvious one is that it would tend to submerge or increase the risk of flooding in the cities. And as many cities tend to be sinking, which reinforces the fact that the global sea levels are rising, that will exacerbate the problem. So, I mean, really, that, I, I see that as the major problem. Also, but all our infrastructure in the coastal zone would be adversely affected. Your um, drains wouldn't work properly. S s freshwater supplies could be threatened. Beaches could be lost a whole range of, of impacts could occur. By overpopulating the coastlines of the world, we are also causing changes which, although less dramatic, will still have an important impact on our future. As the urbanisation of coasts accelerates, coastal habitats are becoming increasingly artificial. Natural ecosystems like wetlands, estuaries and lagoons are being damaged and lost at an alarming rate. So what can be done to preserve the future of the world's coasts? The key is information and understanding. UNESCO is committed to promoting science-based information and tools that will assist coastal urban planners and decision makers, ensuring that coastal space and resources are sustainably allocated, protecting population and infrastructure from the direct impact of hazards. There's a key element of planning there that if future growth could be focused in areas that are less vulnerable to sea level rise, that would be a very wise thing to do. Through the work of its Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, UNESCO's goal is to help coastal member states and megacities to grow safely, in harmony with the ecosystem that supports them.